Hello and welcome to the Fishing Guide Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Weekman. Pretty special guest that we have on uh, this week because I actually have never fished with them at some point. I hope to, oh, yeah. but um, you know the thing about uh, the thing about fishing is you get a lot of opportunity to go out and help people, but also teach people. And uh, Joe Floyd, he, that's what he does. So yes, tell us, tell us about your guide service and and a little I, background history. Yeah, I run um, I run Tennessee Guide Service. Um, Tennessee Fishing Guides, we're kind of based on Old Hickory Lake, um, fish all Middle Tennessee lakes there, um, been guiding there for probably about 15 years now. Um, we, you know, we pride ourselves on helping the weekend angler, um, teaching right. them, let, let, you know, teaching them everything we can and, and how to make their time and utilize their time good on the water and make it more productive for them as far as through electronics and, and patterns of fish throughout the summer and spring and months and everything. So we, I really, really, really love to do the teaching of the whole thing. And, um, it's not just me taking them out there and letting them catch their limit as quick as we can and getting back to the boat ramp, you right. know, it's, um, I really want to. I really show these guys how to do it, and 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 hopefully make their time on the water more productive. Well, before we give them some tips on catching some crappie, yeah. Uh, first, talk about uh, the reservoirs that you guide on, so that um, they can tell, like, because some of them that you were talking about, they're completely different reservoirs. Because now you're down here; it's summer in Mississippi. It's completely different than fishing maybe at Watt. Watts Bar absolutely absolutely um you know we fish a lot you know most of our lakes are are going to be like river system lakes like Pickwick and Old Hickory that's going to have a you know the Cumberland River or something like that Uh um you come down here these lakes down here are you know watershed lakes they're you know they're they're pretty open not not a whole lot of creeks totally different fishing um you know back home we're going to do a lot of ledge fishing we're going to do a lot of deep water fishing we're up here you know we're fishing in six foot of water right that's Uh, a deep hole right and that's a deep (laughs) Oh, you know, here we're catching all these fish this weekend, like six foot of water. So, um, you know, I've been lucky to to be able to be a guide and travel around the country and tournament fish and, and you know, learn this stuff. And, and, and I really pride myself in being able to pass that on to everybody. Right. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of what we do. There you go. So, and besides that, you also do some uh, boat setups and the electronic trips, too. I do right? a whole lot of that. You know, back home, there's a lot of people that, you know, live scopes come out. Um, people, you know, they get this stuff. And a lot, and not saying that, a lot of boat companies will, will set stuff up. Or, or your backyard guy, he'll set stuff up that's not exactly how it should be, you know, as uh-huh. far as transducers being level and side scan. And, um, you know, I'm not a computer guy. I never was a video guy, but I had the first fish finder that ever come out. And I just, it's a one of my things i've always just been been into the fish finder type deal and i've learned everything that i could about it so i try to help a lot of people out um you know teach them what they're seeing um right. teach them how to level their transducers when their boat's running at a certain speed and um just everything you know proper wiring proper air, to get the picture and, and to learn how to be able to find these fish consistently on and make them feel like they can go to any body of water and find and find fish and catch them and a lot of it is is learning lake maps so i teach a lot right. of that um, i teach a lot of learning how to read lake maps and contours and and different lake maps and um so you know that's that's kind of what we pride ourselves on so I what think. what lake map uh are you using well i use um i use the new hummingbird vx and i run the uh-huh. new and i run the new navionics i run both of them okay. um because they're not both the same i think um i think they both have good point good points to both of them uh, for one instance um you know hummingbird i think has a little better contour than navionics right now um i know that garmin's bought navionics out and they're coming up and they're doing a little more stuff um but i was fishing a tournament on kentucky lake about two months ago and I found a big hump in Big Sandy that was not on hummingbird maps, and if I wouldn't wow. have been running both maps, I would not have I caught the you. fish that I caught off of that off of that hump out in the river. Um, and so, you know, there's 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 you know there's they're both good in both ways, but you know I run both of them, and you're going to find stuff on some of the maps that you won't find on the other ones. And uh, sure. you know I do a lot of my research at home. I have both of those on my phone and on my computers. And before I go to these bodies of water, you know I'm studying. I'm making marks at home to what I'm going to look at when I get out there on that lake to try to find that. And I teach that a, a whole lot, a whole right. lot of what to look for, you know, on new bodies of water. Because you know with your avid, with your weekend angler, you know we're trying to get them into 
being able to feel confident to come out and fish some of these tournaments, come out and fish some of these events. And, right. and they, they just, you know, we need to, we need to help them out into how to get out there and to be able to do that and feel confident about being able to get out there and do that. And so that's what I really try to teach in a lot of my trips. Now we go out and we catch fish, but you're going right. to listen to me teach a little bit and, and try to help you out. So, so what do you have on the, the front deck of your boat what on are the you front deck of my boat on the front deck of my boat i'm running an 86 17 garmin uh, uh-huh. for my live scope and then i'm running a 12 22 garmin uh, for my other live scope and then i run a 12 inch hummingbird for mapping on the front okay. and then at the helm i'll run two 12 inch hummingbirds all right. Are you uh, running like a 32 and a 34? I am. Is I'm that running, what the deal yes, is? Yes, sir. I'm running a 32 and a 34. Um, Let's explain know. what that is first, though. Uh, well, the, thir- the 34 is the new uh, Garmin LiveScope transducer. The 32 is the first one that came out. Um, they both have their ups and downs. Um, I think the 34, the cone angle is a little tighter, meaning how – your cone angle is the way what you're seeing out front. So getting your bait into that cone angle is a little tighter. Chasing open water fish, catching roaming fish out in open water, it's a little bit tougher because you're keeping yeah. that, your cone angles a little tighter. But it does help you at a distance. Um, when you're trying to size a fish at 50, 75 foot and even looking through brush and finding fish on structure, the target separation is a little better on the 34, uh-huh. uh, but the 32 has definitely got a little bit wider of a cone angle and it's a little easier to catch roaming and fish with. Um, so we've played with it. You know, we've right. done we've done a lot of research and, and tried it on a little bit of everything. We run, sometimes we'll run one in perspective mode, run in, one in forward mode. Right. Um, you know that way you can see more stuff out to the side of you so um but that you know when you get into doing a lot of that it's a lot for the brain to process because you're on two different screens and you're right. you know you're going you know what you know what's enough when's enough enough you know and stuff like that but um we've worked with it all and and they're both great and i i, I definitely run both of them for sure right so give them a tip if if they don't know much about or don't have a well, lot of experience in Using uh, live sonar. Well, you think, out in front. the thing What's, that I tell most people um, uh-huh. on forward facing sonar is, and it's like my granddaddy told me with work and everything else, you're going to get out what you put in. Right. And I know it's tough for the weekend angler to go out and and spend time practicing because they want to go out and they want to catch fish but this thing takes hours and hours and hours and hours of practice to get used to um so my tip to you is to practice you know what i did when i first got when when live scope first come out get you a like a marker buoy with a lead with a lead anchor let it Uh hang under there 10 foot and and throw it out in the water and practice looking at what you're seeing and then practice getting your bait down to that lead marker and don't do it you know, start out to where it's easy with no wind, but then practice doing it, you know, in a current with wind right. to where you can track that and you can track it. Cause I mean, it's almost like, I mean, it's leading the dove and you know, 80% of the people that, that come to me say, well, I see the fish and I cast it, but my jig never gets down to the fish. Well, my right. first question to them is which way was that fish going? And they look at me and say, huh? And I'm like, well, that fish was not sitting still. You seen him. So you have to have forward progress because the cone angle is so narrow. It's like looking through a paper towel holder that's what i tell people i said Uh you you know there's no everything's front to back and so we have to have forward progress towards that fish to keep him on the screen and so practice that you know practice that with a like i said with a weight down below um and the more you practice the better you're going to get at it and i mean it's a very useful tool um but I spend most of my time, 80% of my time at my steering wheel behind my hummingbirds finding, locating these fish, and then the live scope will help me come out and find the bigger fish within that group. So are you um, up up north when you're not in Mississippi and fishing in there? Yes, sir. That that water's more open, and a lot of channels, and the one... Uh, Tennessee River Valley. Oh, yes, sir. Fishing the TVRs, you Mm -hmm. know, fishing those. And so uh, current... Current and crappie, how does that mix? I'm looking for definitely looking for current breaks. Um, uh-huh. When you know, I'm looking for those for those corners in those creek channels. I'm look that's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, those creek channels coming in and out off of a major river system, in and out of a creek. I'm definitely looking for those corners and looking for those for those current breaks. Uh-huh. And then I'm trying to find structure or suspended fish on those current breaks. When I'm at home looking at mapping before I go to a new lake to fish a tournament. 
those are the first places I'm going to go check. Absolutely the first places I'm going to check is, is those deeper creek channels going in off the river and in a current break. Uh-huh. Uh, meaning, you know, water's going to flow north to south. So when you're looking right. in there and you got your mouth look, map looking true north, you know, any bends in those creeks that are the water's coming over and, and making a break on that backside is definitely where those crappie are going to be hanging out. All right. Well, one, give a give a tip on fishing. What color lure should you use in like dirty water and lightly stained and super clear? What? How would you have like that three different colored waters? How are you gonna adjust? Because you're you're talking about fishing from Tennessee down to Mississippi. Absolutely. What are you gonna do? Um, you know, on my on my real crystal clear lakes, deep lakes, um, reservoirs like say Dale Hollow Lake. You know, yes. really really clear lake. Um, we're just gonna throw something small. Because they're mostly black crappie, yeah. um, we're going to throw a small, just a natural color, a monkey's milk to a blue, something like that. Yeah, um, real natural. Uh, one thing I'll tell, and I, you know, I taught my kids when they were younger, and, and it was funny because I'd always ask him. I asked him the question you asked me. They were like, "What are you going to use today? You know, what, it rained. You know, the creeks are muddy. What are we going to use?" And ninety percent of people are going to tell you they're going to throw something white, chartreuse, something that those fish can see in a muddy water, and uh-huh. that's not right. You know, we're going to throw a black a black and chartreuse in a very stained water um you take a glass of chocolate milk and you drop a white hair jig in it and see how good you can see it then you drop a black hair jig in a glass of chocolate milk and you can see it three times better than you can that white one people don't realize that that black shows up uh, that darker color so low light conditions i'm i'm going to go with a darker color um, right sun comes out crystal clear lakes i'm going with a more lighter color you know like a monkey's milk in a really muddy stained water they're not going to see that as good um, real muddy water i'm going to use a bigger bait for more vibration so they can fit okay. it um so that's kind of my go-to i'm not a real huge different color guy i'm, I'm mostly a black and chartreuse and a monkey's milk and i'm going to use those two whenever the conditions are right you know so sounds like i'd fit perfect in your boat because i i said there is one color to fish and it's black and chartreuse that's my number one go-to as long as you got that up in the river and beaver lake you basically are going to catch fish that's exactly good fish and good fish 90 percent of the places i go i throw black and chartreuse right yep absolutely so um give them also give them a tip on rigging like what is your favorite way to rig up for uh for one pulling when you're, for one, you're fishing with them are you using the weight and the bead stopper what, what i are you am using? um you know a lot of you know you come down here and we do a lot of a long one pulling here in this uh-huh. shallow water but from where i come from um and fishing most of these river systems you know in the summertime these fish get deep on us they get down there you know in 22 foot of water right. 25 foot of water so most of the time i'm 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 pitching to these fish with a oh. with a seven and a half foot rod. Uh-huh. Um, I'm going to be using a three sixteenths ounce jig head with a small split shot above it, right. um, and because and you know we everything has changed since you know we always slow rolled our baits and we watched our line and we were just uh-huh. very slow presentation for crappie and we still we're still like that when we bring it across the crappie's head but we can see that fish now and we want that bait to get it to that fish on that screen as fast as we can because another fish can swim by that fish will take off that fish can spook it, right. there's a lot of stuff that can happen um so that's why we are tending to use heavier stuff now um i use a lot of tungsten now because it's half the size is lead right. um, so you know a quarter ounce tungsten head's going to weigh half or be half the size of what a lead head's going to be um, so we're going to throw quarter ounce tungsten heads a lot with a split shot above it and we're and the only reason for that is just trying to get that bait to that fish as fast as we can all right mm-hmm. so that's mostly what i do um, i'll throw you know eight to ten pound canine fluorocarbon um don't use a whole lot of braid um, yeah that was my next question are yeah, you a braid um, man or no, no i'm not um a no. tendency and, and the only reason why i'll throw some braid on my personal poles um but with a lot of clients that aren't used to braiding stuff you have a lot of tendency to let it wrap around the tip um, uh-huh. it's not you know with a fluorocarbon it don't have the memory um so you know it's, it's a lot easier with that, that way to go that way but um you know canine makes some of the best line and that new fluorocarbon and stuff it's 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 come a long way it's really good stuff so and and in general when you're taking clients out 
it's um, you're teaching them in one pole then. I the am. Well, yeah, Any most of the time rigging we do. Not? Yeah, when I come down here in the summer, you know, we do a lot of power trolling here, um, uh-huh. and it's actually nice to get away from one pole and then come down here to Mississippi and do some trolling because we stay uh-huh. on that screen and up there for so long, you know, which it, we love it. Um, but it, yes, we will. We'll come down here and we'll and we'll we'll push men double men of rigs that that uh-huh. Steve Coleman and them come out with, you know. Right. And we'll push those a lot and we'll power troll with Les Smith. So right. uh, we we do that a lot my boat's rigged up to do the same thing we'll push eight poles off the front and pull eight off the back right um are and you pulling fun. crankbaits off the back we'll, we'll pull cranks our long lines yep uh-huh. mm-hmm. long lines, well, what, long lines are pull cranks yeah. what kind of uh, boat do you have i've got a uh 2021 nitro z20 uh um, okay Yep. So a 20 foot boat. Do. So yep. you're pulling with that. So you using a Garmin trolling motor? No, I'm oh. I'm with an Ultrix, and um, the reason okay. I the reason I'm with Ultrix is um, because I run the one boat network through all my hummingbirds. Um, oh, I, I can gotcha. run I can yep. run my Minn Kota Raptors. I can run my trolling motor. Okay. All through my hummingbirds, and I'm a hummingbird man on the side scan. Um, all, every depth finder is good for what they've got, but. Um, when, so much when I'm able to, different things. Well, I, there is so much different things, but and I've went through them all, you know, and it's all trial and error. But um, when I can go to a new lake and I can range that side scan out there to 150 foot, and then I can see clearly to find fish, that's a that's a big thing to me. Yeah, um, absolutely. So. Well, that takes us to Tackle Time. Tackle Time sponsored by Pico Lures. Pico Lures has a complete line of hard and soft baits. You can check them out at picolures.com. And I'll tell you what, they have plenty of lures to go catch crappie with. Our, our right now, of course, during the summer, uh, the crankbaits are phenomenal, Absolutely. hot things. And they're in most of the stores, especially in uh, Mississippi and uh, like Kentucky, around Kentucky Lake. Kentucky Some Lake, of the stores yep. have them up in there. So you can check them out there. Uh, Ellis store in Paducah, he's, he's actually got them. But yep, you can does. check it out or you can get them online. Uh, that's where I order us, mine straight through Pico online. So, yeah. Tell us a little bit. Uh, give a shout out to your sponsors. Uh, yeah, uh, Volunteer Boats. You know they keep me up and running with uh, with all my service and um, hook and bullet sunglasses. If you guys had never tried them, you know I mean I'm telling you, it, it, it's amazing with your electronics. Um, being in poles, obviously my granddaddy when we were little kids, that's all we ever fished was being in poles. So I'm happy to have them. Um, you know, crappie magnet. Um, K9 fishing line, uh, cornfield fishing gear, man, their mounts. Uh, you know, we run high dollar, that 8617 is an $8,000 unit on the front of that boat. And right. and I use cornfield fishing gear to protect my investments on my boats. And um, so, you, you know, and all of us are like a big old family. It's, uh, it's good stuff. So all right. I, I appreciate it. There you go. Sounds good. Well, like I always like to end the show, make sure you keep your hook sharp and your lures in the water. That's right. 